Uh, back in the day, one of the biggest, most successful pop composers of all time, and Burt Bacharach died. Yeah, I didn't know he was alive still. He was, what, 94? In 94 years old, yeah. yeah. I remember his classic appearance in Austin Powers' The Spy Who Shagged Me. We had two of them. He was in the first one and the second I was one. in the first. Oh, yeah, Mike right. Myers he loved him. Remember yeah. he's on the double-decker with yeah, uh, Elizabeth right. Hurley? I forgot he was in the first one, too. Yeah. yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Burt Bacharach. What the world needs now is love, sweet love. No, not just for some. God, Elizabeth Hurley was so foxy. Oh. I forget she's in that movie. She's great. I just watched Bedazzled a couple weeks ago, and man, she's definitely one of those all-time women for me that I can just go back and feel like a kid again. And she looks great. Yeah. She still still looks amazing. Yeah. She's so hot. And then he brings him back. The Spy Who Shagged Me was him and um, Heather, Heather Graham. Heather Graham, yeah. She was Felicity Shagwell. And it was him and Elvis Costello. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Bert Bacharach and Mr. Elvis Costello. What a ridiculous movie series. <laughs> I know, right? I love it, though. The Austin Powers film series, by the way, is a series that could not be made now. No. Or would have to be made in a very, mm. very different way And now. what's so funny about it is there's a lot of jokes about how much more politically correct things are in the late 90s, early 2000s. Yeah. And it would, it would be kind of funny to jump ahead and see, like, you know, it, it, it might be funny to make another one. Yeah. Just if he was frozen since the year 2000, what, Now three? he's in 2023. Yeah, now he's in 2023, and they're like, well... You know, you can't do any of that stuff that you thought was okay in the 90s. And It's so weird to think that that's how Beyonce made her breakout role. As an actress. Yeah. she. Well, she, she hadn't done much acting other than that. I mean, she was in Dreamgirls, right? And yeah, she was A couple that, of things. But. Dreamgirls, that was the, the... She had a lot of movies. Did she? She had the one, the one uh, acting role she had that didn't involve singing was that, like... Uh, the one with Idris Alba and the white chick is like disturbed or something like that. Obsessed. Obsessed. That's yeah. what it was. And she's like, You come into my house, you touch my child. Well, I remember she was in Cadillac Records too, which was better than people gave it credit for. But... Etta James. Yeah. But I think that a lot of people remember her from Gold Member. That was the third one, right? What was her name in that? Foxy Cleopatra, Cleopatra or something. Foxy, yeah. Foxy Cleopatra. I never saw that third one. Because well, the first two, like, when you're, uh, and again, I wasn't a kid. A lot of people love the Austin Powers movies because they were kids. Yeah. I was in college, and I still thought they were funny because they were just stupid fun or whatever. But the the thing with Mike Myers, every movie he does, the jokes you can see coming 4,000 miles away. And so you have to enjoy those jokes because you already know what they are. Um, see, the, the, if he's the, drinking the coffee and it looks like poop on his lip, like, you mm-hmm. laugh because it's silly it's and it's so fun. The top. But, but the thing is... There's a short shelf life on that kind of comedy. When he's doing... That stuff, like his bigger hits, Austin Powers, those are funny, but I still always go back to, I mean, I love the Wayne's World's movies, which aren't exactly subtle, but they're, I think there's a little more nuance to the, some of the jokes in those, uh, in, in just like the characters. And then you have, so I married an ex, so murderer, an ex which is just such an underrated, who's I, oh, me and Chad Daniels were talking about that movie when we were in Sacramento. Great movie. And just... Like going like scene by scene because we love that movie so much and nobody knows about it. Yeah. Great movie. Nobody knew about it at the time. I saw it in the movie theater with three other people. I saw I it twice. It. I saw it twice in the theater. I didn't get to see it in the theater, but once it was on VHS, it was on like a regular rotation at our house. And like me and my older brothers and my friend Norby would just quote Norby. it constantly. Yeah. Norby. Norbert. Norbert, not Norbit. Yeah. Norbert. So, yeah, Burt Bacharach, um, uh, he won Grammys, he won Oscars, he wrote dozens and dozens and dozens of hit songs. Uh, but Raindrops Keep Falling on My Head when I was a little kid because that was in Butch Cassidy, the Sundance Kid. He wrote for Dionne Warwick, he wrote for Tom Jones, he wrote for Aretha Franklin. You know, in like the 80s, maybe 70s, 80s, whatever, he was married to a woman named Carol Bayer Sager. She was a singer. 
And um, so for a while, it was Burt Bacharach and Carol Bayer Sager. Their, their names were all one long thing for about a decade in the um, mid-'80s because they would do, like, variety shows and things like that. But, um, yeah, still alive, still doing stuff. 94. He did great song from him that I never hear a lot of people talk about. You know, when you're just sitting around talking about the greatest hits of Burt Bacharach? Mm-hmm. We've all had that late-night conversation. We've all... You know, right, you're blowing some lines of cocaine, and then you're like, Burt Bacharach. <laughs> Let me tell you, <laughs> Let me the Burt Bacharach I yeah, know yeah. is House is Not a Home is a great song. Dusty Springfield did it. Um, Luther covered it in the early 80s. Luther Vandross. Oh, so that's where that song came yeah, from. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, okay, so I only know Great it from song. Luther. Yeah. Is uh, another Burt Bacharach song. You could easily do if you were so inclined. You could do a radio format of all of the Burt Bacharach songs because he wrote so many different kinds of songs for yeah. different people. Some of them he performed himself. They've been covered a billion different ways. You could easily do something like that. You could do WBRT and get people tuning in. But yeah, I forgot about Heather Graham and that awesome. But Heather Graham's so foxy. so foxy. Fox so cute. And foxy Cleopatra? I don't know, but she's pretty foxy. I don't know what she's doing. I mean, they, now. they did she's... a great job with all the leading women in those movies. Like, yeah, I was there for the jokes, but I didn't mind looking at any of those uh, women. I like a movie where, because if you recall the beginning of um, Austin Powers 2, it is revealed that Elizabeth Hurley was a fembot the whole time. So yeah. I, I like when a sequel starts with the last person from the first one and they kill them immediately. Yeah. It's like a horror movie, you know? The final girl lives. In the first Friday the 13th, and then she gets killed in the very beginning of the second one, so then get the new cast in. I love that. That narrative love, thread that goes through. <laughs> and I love the way they break down the fourth wall, and they're like, turns out she was a fembot the whole time. <laughs> and they're like, okay. Like, just kind of like, yeah. yeah, we know it makes no sense, but hey. This is some footage yeah. that we shot beforehand, mm-hmm. and we're going to use it for this one. Heather Graham was in that. Um, anybody see that MGK Western that he did a couple years ago? She was in that. The Machine Gun Kid. <laughs> <laughs> it should have been. <laughs> no, he when he's a thespian, he's Colson Baker. Mm, I when he's on stage, one. he's Machine Gun Kelly. But when he's acting, in the, short, like the Club. short-lived show uh, Roadies mm-hmm. over there in Showtime is great. And that he was Colson Baker. No, yeah, Western called The Last Son couple of years ago. It was good. It was all right. And she was in that. I mean, Heather Graham's like my age. She looks dynamite. Uh, I know what'll make everybody feel better. You want it some more Jenna? Oh, sure. You know, Jenna calls yeah, we're... us nonstop on the after hours line and just leaves constant, constant voicemails. And so sometimes we like to repurpose them so everybody can enjoy them at once. It's time for Sweet Nothings. Sweet nothings. With Jenna from Poland. Nobody gives me any respect, but all the queers get respect. This has been Sweet Nothings with Jenna from Poland. You know, she's noticed, she's mentioned the queers on a couple of occasions. And there's something strange about it. Mm -hmm. Um, Her and I have some in common. You mention the queers all the time. But you don't even do that. That's not even a word that you use with any regularity. I don't use queers. You could if you want to, but There's a lot of things uses... I could do if I wanted to. Oh, well, not here you couldn't. <laughs> talking about here. I don't care what you do out there. <laughs> um, but, yeah, she's she's really got a boner for... She wants some respect. It puts some respect on her name. Yeah, I again, I like them because they're so out of context. I, I feel weird using like I feel like a, a a Roseanne. Like I'm so queer. I'm I'm so queer because uh, I'm so different from you guys. I, that word is just queer. It's a queer word. It's it's very weird. I don't know. I don't like. Well, using for a it. long time it was a slur, and then it kind of got reclaimed, and then because we're feels, here, not queer, right? Well, I mean, even after that, I don't. And back then, like you had to be gay to use it. Now it feels as it's it's still a word that I associate with a slur, so it's not one that jumps to my mind. But it feels like a word that when somebody uses it, uh, just in normal conversation, it's not so weird anymore. I don't know. I, I could be completely yeah, misreading. I've, I've, it, I've heard people just say like, "Oh, I'm queer." I'm like, "Oh, okay." 
Right. Well, that's still referring to themselves. I mean, like, other people referring to it not as a slur. Until I started doing, like, the, the Pride Guide and, like, being a part of, like, the actual LGBTQ. You're the Pride I, Guy over on, um, uh, you're on Pride Radio? 106.5.5. <laughs> 106.5.5. <laughs> Hi, everybody. It's the Lake HD2. Is it's, that what it is? It's the Lake Lake. It's, it's, yeah, the Lake Lake. The real the <laughs> Lake Lake. The Lake Lake. The Lake. Uh, um, I, I thought the Q was LGBTQ, right. like queer. It's not. It's, it's Pound Cake on Pride Radio. We gay anything. <laughs> yeah. You're the, did you say you're the Pride Guy? I do the Pride Guide. Oh, Pride Guide. I thought your alter ego was the Pride Guy. Oh, hell no. Uh, Do you know how quickly I would be canceled? <laughs> no, not really. No, it's Pride Radio and you're gay. I mean, you, like you said, you can say whatever you want. But I thought that maybe you were being referred to, hey, everybody, it's, you know, to separate yourself from Pound Cake. Are you Pound Cake on Pride Radio? Yeah, I mean, that that is, that's how I'm known. I, I mean, know, I feel yeah, like yeah. when they book me to do those um, Pride, uh, what, what do we do on on? Pride bill, like the, the, flat, uh, out the pride. flat out pride. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm pound cake there. Well, no, no. What I'm saying is that's locally. Anything you're doing on the app, people can listen anywhere. That's why I wondered if maybe you were. I mean, at this point, I'm pound cake on this show. I'm pound cake on my podcast. Like I'm, I'm pound cake. Like that. That is. I just wondered if you, you grabbed another your alter socials. ego. Grab another alter ego for yourself for Pride Radio. You should change your socials to Pound Cake. What are they now? Oh, Cody mm-hmm. Beat Radio. Radio Cody no, B. because that has been taken. Guarantee you, pound cake has been taken. Well, you can find one that's like pound cake two one six. Do you know how hard it is? I am on Radio Cody B on Instagram, tw- like across the board. I got Radio Cody B Twitter, Instagram, TikTok. I am no way am I changing that. Yeah, but it doesn't. It's not like it starts you from zero. You just rename yourself. No, I don't want to because I don't want to unless they all. But match. if you can find one that works for all of it, oh, I don't, it's not that deep. People on people on if they follow me on Instagram, they know I'm pound cake. Like it's. I'm still Radio Cody B. Like, and if you I'm, search Pound Cake on Twitter, he comes up. But, but it's, and it's Pound Cake one word, not Pound Cake. And then a lot of girls' asses come up. <laughs> pound Cake. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm, I'm not doing it. It's not that deep. Oh, I, sorry, that's Pound a Cake. Because All right, I, well, that's different. I put it in the bio, mm-hmm. a.k.a. Pound Cake. Mm-hmm. That's good. Because mm-hmm. I feel like a lot of people would be like, I was looking for, you know, girls with big butts. And <laughs> now you popped up. Hmm. Well, maybe you can uh, point them to the right place. Uh, see, the thing that I've always thought was strange is his bio says, Radio Extraordinaire. Mm-hmm. Which seems to be the wrong way to apply that adjective. Right. Radio Extraordinaire. If he said Broadcaster Extraordinaire, that seems like it would be the right thing. But he's always had Radio Extraordinaire. I think it I describes never... him perfectly. Does it? I mean, you get you know who he is. <laughs> He's radio outstanding. Yeah. Okay, well, there you go. But uh, I just want to clarify that you weren't uh, the pride guy over there. No, I'm I'm the guy on Pride Radio that does the pride guide. Uh, by the way, the Church of Satan has weighed in on that Sam Smith uh, performance at the Grammys. He performed uh, under red lights, and he had a red top hat, and the whole devil thing or whatever, and... Uh, and people, of course, his performance rivaled only by the performances of people like Ted Cruz pretending that it's 1985 all over again mm-hmm. and screaming about the devil and their ch- I swear to God, I don't know how this is real life. But all these um, uh, loons uh, screaming about the devil. And the Church of Satan was like, we thought it was kind of boring. Like, we didn't have a problem with it. We thought it was just fine. We had a problem with the hat, really. The top hat with the horns. We didn't care for that so much. Because uh, it was just stupid. Uh, but actual Satanists, or the Church of Satan, they were like, we don't have a problem with this. It's completely fine with us. We would have liked for him to really go overboard. But uh, he didn't. I think they were, they're were they more in maybe the Lil Nas X lane when it comes to uh, the Satanic yeah, imagery. Yeah, it's cartoony. Right. So, um, yeah, it's supposed to be cartoony. Yeah. And Madonna... Warned everyone, are you ready for some controversy? Right. Right? Remember how Hank Jr. would ask if you were ready for some football? Mm-hmm. Where are you ready for some football? Uh, Madonna asked if you were ready for some controversy, and that's how the, that uh, came around. Hey, what's up, guys? 
What up, Satan? What'd you think of the Sam Smith performance? I always like to hear what from the man himself. I liked it. I thought it was fantastic. What? I'm a, I'm, I'll, I'll be real with you. Yeah? I'm a bit of a chubby chaser. Oh, yeah? Oh, man. Like, he has chubbed up over the years, hasn't he's he? He's looking round and mm-hmm. sound, and I love it. He's, he's right on that cusp of moving into fat. Right now, he's just... No, little, he's fat. He's chubby. He's just a chubby boy. I'll take him any way he comes. Yeah. I don't care if he's on the cusp. Oh, we're, I'll we're, do all of it. Satan. Yes, sir. You're misgendering them. Oh, I'm sorry. I yeah, come like, on, Satan. I like their fat ass. <laughs> <laughs> See that, that better? Yeah, that's better. I'm getting called out by the pride guy over here. <laughs> so what was your favorite part of their performance? Just everything they did. I liked all the gyrating. And I'll tell you something else. I liked the hat. Everybody oh, wow. hates the hat. I like the hat. I, 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 that's a controversial take, that's but a, I guess you're hey, a controversial guy. Hey, Bill, you know what that is? That's a hot take. <laughs> <laughs> they don't get much hotter, do they? Okay, <laughs> <laughs> you're not laughing. <laughs> the pride guy didn't like that. That's a hot take from Satan down here. No, I like that hat. I'm going to set up, um, it's all my intellectual property, so I'm going to set up, I think, some merch to go along with that. So if you guys want to get uh, one of those uh, horny hats is what I'm calling them. Horny hats? I'll, ha- I'll be, have those uh, for you. It would be interesting to see if a top hat could be a fashion staple again, uh, especially if it's got devil horns on it. That would be a bold move by a lot of people. Uh, but I would like to see Absolutely, it. I'd yeah. like to see it take its uh, place back at the top because I mean, there was a while where top hats were all the rage, and they've, they've been displaced by baseball caps like I'm wearing right now. I will say this: Sam Smith in a top hat really, really surprised me because I thought for sure he'd be wearing a Day. bottom hat. <laughs> oh God, get it? There's another. Hot take from the devil. Mm-hmm. Oh, bottom hat, donkey. I, I have a question. Lay it on me. So I'm okay with the top hat. I'm okay with the horns. But why has everything got to be red? There's got to be more than one color down there in hell. Like, what, what other colors can someone be ungodly or unholy with? Can you handle the truth? Yes. I'm going to get real with you. It's my fault because I've always had rosacea. I have a skin condition that makes me look very, very red all the time. Now you combine that with the eons and eons of heat down here. The what? The rosacea and the heat down here. Everything's red. It's not my favorite either, but everybody's just taken that and they ran with it and now everything's got to be red. Well, they want to make you feel comfortable in your own little home. Yeah. It's your oasis. Listen, I, uh, I gotta go, guys. I got a new shipment of those hats coming in. So, oh, okay. anyway, remember, bottom hats. <laughs> <laughs> trying to forget. That dude knows what's up. Now, say what you want, but, um, hell of a lot worse than that. Good call, by the way, on the uh, on the pronoun, pride guy. I forgot about that. Mm-hmm. Forgot about Sam Smith is uh, non-binary. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I've got to take a break here. If uh, you want to get yourself on one thousand dollars, well, uh, we'll do it shortly. Another keyword coming for you to go fund yourself on the way at three thirty. So listen for that. And after the break, if you want to get to our advanced screening of Ant Man and the Wasp: Quantum 